Hi guys, this is Victoria and today I'm very excited to share with you a design I've been working on. Basically I call this the numbered dice. It is a cube uh, branching on from the techniques that I've already taught you in my other tutorials. Uh, it's not stuffed but it does hold its shape quite well. I'm happy with how this one um, turned out with its angles. I'm sorry it's taken so long. My OCD just would not let me release a design that I was not happy with. Um, and I had to tweak it more. This was my first try. And yeah, it looks alright, but I'm not happy with the overall shape. I wasn't happy with the way I stitched it. I made it in three pieces and stitched the two outside. I wasn't very happy with um, the way the stitching turned out and it was going to be too hard for most beginners. So then this was my next try. I made it in jelly bands. I'm very happy with how this prototype turned out. Um, but after doing it the same way with doing the two corners, I decided instead of making three pieces for this tutorial, we are just going to make two pieces. So for this cube, I made it in two pieces and then I stitched it together. So the good thing about this is that also instead of having uh, many pieces that you have to stitch together, I started in one spot, worked my way around, all the way around, and I ended in the same spot. So I think that also will be a lot easier for you beginners um, and maybe even just beginners with your um, hook only looming or crocheting. So yeah, this one here I did in jelly bands and the design I'm going to do today I'm going to do in jelly bands again but I will just be doing it with the two pieces instead of the three. It's completely up to you, you can um, experiment as much as you like. I would love to see all your different creations. I've got so many ideas for these cube designs but I have to stop myself otherwise I won't get anything filmed for you guys. So I'd love to see some ABC building blocks, you know, like the kids building blocks maybe. Um, yeah, you can stuff these if you like but I find I love the squishiness of them. I don't, I didn't stuff these two. This one I did stuff and it's not so squishy, um, but it's completely up to you. So that's given you some ideas. As of this moment, my design is not available for me to print off on bracelet.com. But here is one of my doodles. You may have seen one of my other um, fiddlies what I would call a doodle I guess, uh, bits and pieces on my Instagram of me figuring out what size I was going to do each square and my numbers. But this is how the design is set out. On bracelet book it will be straight along and I've done a different colour to show you where you're going to split and make the two halves. So we're basically just making two bracelets using my technique um, and for these centre corners for the edges, where are we? They will be done slightly differently. So you will see as we go. I will be following off from this, um, but that design will be available for you and all the information will be in the description bar below. Now it's not a perfect cube, but it is a very solid design. So I am happy with how it's turned out. Like I said, experiment how you will. Um, I've put my design just into a slip book so that I can cross it off as I'm going. Um, and today I will be using Rainbow Loom Jelly Navy Blue and the, the Rose Pink in the jelly as well. I wanted to use the jelly bands because I know that there have been people having issues with doing um, my designs with the jelly bands snapping. So I promise you that I will not edit out any of my bands breaking that sort of thing. So you can see um, that it is possible if you just take some time, have some patience. 
This one I used uh, the purple and teal opaque uh, Rainbow Loom brand bands and I used the purple for the cross bands. This one I used the green jelly and the navy blue jelly and I used the green jelly for the cross bands. This design uses approximately 500 bands so for the background I will be using this pink like I said and I will need approximately 315 that includes cross bands for the darker color for the numbers and the border including the stitching together um, I'll need about 175 so we'll just say roughly 500 bands in total so starting with just your two peg bars arrow pointing to your right and both just in straight formation next to each other we are going to lay a first row. Now I've done the first one on my squiggle as circles so that you know that that is our starting row instead of slipping an extra one in there. If you've seen my other tutorials that will make sense. So we're going to start on the peg that the arrow is pointing to. I'm just going to put a singular band in my background colour and then the rest are going to be cap bands. So singles doubled doing a straight chain we are laying seven bands in total so all singles doubled except for that first one and seven So we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight pegs with bands on them. The last peg, I'm going to take a single and double it in my fingers, and then I'm going to double it onto that peg, wrapping it around. Try that again, shall we? Onto the peg and then around onto the peg again. So now we're going to chain that back up onto itself starting from that bottom cap band reaching in behind and grabbing that bottom band back up onto itself. We're going to do that all the way up. This tension that you're working with it's not going to be as great throughout the bracelet but get used to it okay so now with the last one here that was just that single band we're going to turn that into a slip knot putting it up grabbing the bottom band and just pulling it over itself grab that band off pull it tight and attach it to that upper peg so now you should have that one slip knot band there and one, two, three, four, five, six, seven pegs. That is our starting row. Push it down. We're going to do our next row. So I will, this is where our arrow on our board is, just to remind you. We've done that. We're doing the next one. So single bands doubled. I will have one, two, three, four, five of my pink, one of my blue, and then another pink. Single band doubled and laying it from the bottom to the top. Working with our arrow on our left side at all times. Single band doubled from one to its opposing peg. And again, until you've done that whole row in the colour formation. And then a navy blue for me. And another pink. So that's what it should look like for you. We're going to grab that bottom row, that chain, and we're just going to move it up and over. Sorry about my lighting guys, it's horrible. 
that whole bottom row up and over and into the middle all the way down. Now if I do go too fast you can pause, rewind, fast forward. I don't mind. So we've done that whole chain up and over into the middle. Just make sure I haven't missed any bits. There we go. And that's what it should look like. Now we can move on. And we're going to lay a cross band now. So I'm going to use my pink. Give it a little bit of a stretch. This is where people have been having trouble. And go from your first peg of your design all the way to the end one. It's nice and tight but it's manageable, okay? So we've done this line, going to the next one, three pink, single doubled, one, two, three, then a navy blue, and a pink again, blue, pink. And we're ready to loom that row. So grab that center band, <coughs> pardon me, the cross band, sorry, and you want to grab it gently up and over and into the middle. Then you want to go the bottom row from the outside up and over into the middle. All the way down. You can go all the way down one side, back up the other. You can do one side and then the other of each peg. It's up to you. Find your rhythm. But we're just shifting that whole bottom row just that bottom row of bands up over and into the middle like so. So push your bands down and you should have that last line that we lay on there. We're going to just keep going laying a cross band once again across those seven pegs and then going on to our next row, just that one. Pink. Three. And then the blue. And then another pink. And then another blue. And then another pink and that's my next line done so once again we're going to grab that cross band move it up and over and into the middle and then we're going to work our bottom row on both sides up and over into the middle Pushing bands down, laying our cross band, so seven pegs. This is what holds our design together, and we're on to the next row. Shadow guys. 
So working that cross band up now, we've done that line into the middle. And then going that bottom row. So straight down. And then back up the other side. And pushing the bands down. Another row done. Laying a cross band. And I've got three pink. And then I'll just skip that blue, but I won't forget to put it back there. Three pink on the other side. And a blue in the middle. Alright, grabbing that cross band and shifting it up and over into the center. And then working your bottom row once again. Up and over and into the middle. I apologize if I'm going too fast for you. This is going to be um, quite a long tutorial. So feel free, like I said, to pause. You will need to rewind and do it again for the next half. So on to the next line of this four. Putting in a cross band. We've got one, two, three pink, blue in the middle, and another three pink single dot. Again, grabbing that center band up over into the middle and working your bottom row up and over and into the middle. On both sides. Pushing your design down. that's another line done. Now I've just got to do one line of the plain pink. So we're putting down cross band and all pink. barking all down the street. One last pink there. So that pretty much finishes up that four. We're going to grab that cross band, bring it into the middle, work our bottom row up and over into the middle like normal. done that we are not going to lay a cross band this is the slight difference no cross band just straight onto that edge pull it apart so you can see there's double bands through the whole design 
except for on that corner and that's what makes it easier to sharpen at the end. So we won't put a cross band down and we will just do that full line of the dark blue single doubled all the way down. So we've got those two pinks and then blues. We're just going to work the pink same way we would up and over into the middle on both sides. Being careful not to lose any bands. And now we can move on to the three that you can see there upside down. Pushing all your bands down. You can now remove this singular knotted band that we got on the end there. Just remember that you're working from the side that has the arrow. Your design should be feeding through quite nicely. Don't have to worry about tugging on it yet. And we'll just move on with the next line. So, grab my pans. Laying down pink cross band. And doing a full line of just the pink. pink on that line. Cross that line off. Bringing that cross center band up over into the middle. And then working your bottom row of the blue up and over into the middle. On both sides. Pushing your bands down, getting another cross band, putting down that cross band, and we are laying the next row of the design This is going to start getting a little bit more awkward as it feeds through the bottom. Just for you to um, rest it on the table, I mean, you know, it might be easier for you to do it in your lap. Try that again. Really hating this shadow. So there we go. And working that centre band. Once again over into the middle and then your bottom row up and over on both sides. Okay, so now at this point you may be able to grab your design Start pulling it through, just give it a little bit of a tug, you don't have to force it because it obviously will get longer as you put more on. Push all those bands down and you can see there is a little four hidden in there. 
So we're going to keep going with the design. Onto the next line. What I might do is fast forward, but don't forget to lay your cross bands in between your rows. I'm going to keep going and I'm going to fast forward. And I'll slow down again once I get to that next green. So you can start pulling it through a little bit more now to help you shift your bands down as you're going. Okay, so I'm just finished laying that last line that has the bit of three in it. You can see it's getting a little bit more awkward to sit on the table. Grabbing that centre cross band, bringing it up over into the middle, working that bottom row up and over once again. Repetition, repetition. And on the opposite side. Okay, pushing down, maybe even pulling your design through a little bit more gently. Gently so, always gently. We are going to lay cross band and then we're just going to do that row of the one colour for me is pink. Flick myself with band and grabbing that cross band up and over into the middle. I just flicked a band off there, so I'm going to have to fix that. There we go. Moving that band up and over. Okay. And then working our bottom row with that last bit of the three in there. Down one side, up and over into the middle. Grabbing all of those bands on the bottom row. And we've finished that square, which was the three. So pushing our bands down, we are going to Forget the cross band and just lay that row for me of blue. So now just working that full row of the pink that I have there up and over into the middle of the blue on both sides. Done. So Pull your design through a bit more. You can see there is now a three in there all stretched out. As it comes through, those cross bands get more comfortable and pull into shape. So it does end up becoming a nice size square. And we've done that. So now we've just got to do that lucky last one. And that's one half of it now done made. So again 
cross band pink for, for me across and we're doing one full row of just that background colour so what I might do is I will carry on with this number one laying down my rows of my pattern bringing over those center cross bands bringing up that bottom row over into the middle so bringing up my cross band bringing up my bottom row then of course you are going to lay another cross band and follow on with your next row. I will keep filming but I will fast forward and I'll see you at the end of the one. Yep, the last line. So I'm going to put my cross band, last line of the one, should I say, and lay it out as I have been. Lucky last little blue in the middle there. Okie dokie bringing that center band up into the middle and then working our bottom row up and over that was our last center band that we're going to lay for this part pushing all the bands down so no center band this time again we're just going to lay that last row, which is just the plain background colour, the pink. Singles doubled, as with the rest of the design. Then we are into the last little one. Okay, we're going to work that bottom row, remember there's no centre band, work the bottom row up and over on both sides as normal so that we are just left with that last row of the pink that we just put down. Right. So that should be what you have there, just that one row, and it coming through the bottom. To close up, you want to grab the top last band and bring it over onto itself, onto its opposing peg. Then you want to grab both of those bands on your hook and get the top next one slip it through them so I really wish my light was better Let's see if I can get my sippy cup there we go I'm gonna get both of these bands on my hook like so, hold it with your finger, grab that next top band, turn your hook, sorry guys, and slip it through, like so. So I've held that other band on there, you can put it back onto the opposing peg. Right, we'll try that again. So what I just did, 
I grabbed the two bands onto my hook. Sorry, the pink background of my cup lid is not fantastic. Both of those bands onto your hook, hold it there with your finger, grab the next top band, pull it off its peg, holding the other peg, turn your hook and slip those bands onto that band and you can replace it onto its opposing peg. Okay, so I hope you got that. I'm going to keep doing the same thing all the way up. So we're going to grab those two bands onto the hook, grab the top band on the next row, turning our hook and pulling that band through, making sure that you have just got that band. we go and then putting that back onto its opposing peg. This is probably the trickiest part is closing it up but I find that this has the most uh, best visual effect at the end. I just lost half of my band there so I'm gonna have to slip my hook back through gosh give me a second the lighting in this room is shocking today I grab that little bit of band that I just lost gah sorry guys There we go. I'm putting that back on its opposing peg. So, grabbing those bands on the hook, grabbing the next top one, pulling it through those two, putting it back on its peg, opposing peg, grabbing both all on that peg on the hook to the next top band, pulling that band through and then grabbing that last one. Okay so I've got my design there with that last band on my hook. I want you just to grab probably two single bands just for extra strength. And I want you to pull them through and slip knot them. So get those two bands, pull them through all the bands on your hook and slip knot it one through the other. Pull it nice and tight. Okay, so that's what should look like. Mine's a little bit mucked up because I did lose a couple of bands but I managed to um, grab them. I'm not happy with how that um, turned out with the filming. So what you want to do is go on and make the next one, 562, exactly the same way that we just did this one. I'm going to do that, but when I get to the end, I'm going to show you how to close it again because I'm going to try and um, do it a little bit better on camera for you. It's, it's really not as hard as it looks. I swear. All right, so that's one half. And with these cross bands here, the blue, you can push them down, fold them there, and at the end we will give them a little bit of a pull just to make it more defined, but they will end up looking like corners. Okay, so if you want, rewind and watch me do this one again, but follow on with that design. And when we get to the end, I'll show you how to finish it again. Or you can fast forward 
or just watch it right now because obviously we're going to clip to it. Oh, and I just wanted to say that so far I have not snapped any of my jelly bands. Um, so I think I'm doing pretty well. I don't personally have a lot of problem with jelly bands snapping. Some brands are a bit crappy, obviously, but yeah. So far, so good. Sorry about my crappy lighting. Love you guys. See you in a second. Hi guys. So I've done my second half. I've gotten all the way up to the last row. So after I've done that bottom of the two, I didn't put a cross band. I just went straight on and I lay that row of the pink background. I've brought it all up and over into the top and I'm ready to finish it off. So what you would have done, started your design with that chain and then followed on with your design now we're at the end, I'm going to finish it off again. So grabbing that last top band and moving it to its opposing peg. Then grabbing both of those bands on my hook, grabbing the top band, flipping my hook around and pulling that band through. So then grabbing both of those bands on my hook again, moving on to the next top band, pulling it through all those bands. Grabbing that bottom band onto my hook, so we got those two on your hook, grabbing that top band, flipping it around, flipping your hook around and pulling it through, and then grabbing the band off the bottom peg. So I've got them on my hook and doing it again, grabbing the top band, flipping my hook around and pulling it through those two bands, or one, and then grabbing the second half of that band off the bottom peg. Once again, grabbing my next top band, pulling it through those two on my hook, and then picking up the bottom band off that peg. And onto the last one, grabbing that band, turning my hook, pulling it through the two bands on my hook, and grabbing that last band off, and we are done. So two single bands, pull it through those bands on the hook, and slip knot those, so one through the other. Pull it nice and tight and you can stretch out your design. Now from the start we have these band hanging off we don't need. Remove that. Same with the four. And that's what we've got. 462, I mean sorry, 431, 562. So stretch them around so that you're happy with the tension and how your bands are sitting in the design because now we are going to join the two. We are going to stitch around and turn it into its cube shape. So give them a fold. doesn't make a big difference if you have it shaped with those corners yet. Clear your space, just get your bands you're using for the outside, so I'm using blue, and we'll get started on stitching it into that cube. Now once you've got your two pieces the way that they're supposed to be, so not with the numbers back to front, um, I will get you to fold them and squish them a little bit. You don't have to worry about pulling at the bands yet but just get them to make that rough little edge there. After we've joined them we will perfect it more. And I want to join these 
probably with these dangly bits there somewhere close to each other it doesn't really matter which way you join it because the way that I've made the pattern the two is on the opposite side of the five like a real dice the six is on the opposite side of the three so it should work out that way I'm going to start the four and the five in the corner there so I'm going to switch to using a crochet hook because it's a little bit easier for me but all I'm going to do is I'm going to get the four, the five upside down and the four the right way around I'll place them next to each other and I'm going to go through this end cap band and both of that side of the blue so I've gone in between there and then I'm just going to grab a blue band and I'm just going to pull it through and I'm going to put it back on my hook like so then what I want you to do is go through the same area but just two of the bands just two of the bands on that corner cap band and then we're going to go through the back side of that first pink stitch on the five right I'm going to grab another band I'm going to pull it through just pulling it through the pink and then placing it back pull it out so that it's halfway and then place it back on your hook so you should have the first blue band just make it a bit easier to see for you they're a bit tangled up okay you should have your first band that you've fed through there and then the second band that you've fed through the second band you've fed through on there we're going to pull it through the first okay then holding your two pieces together we're going to go to the next stitch the back side of it and grab that two of that capped band moving over to the next piece and doing the same thing the back side of that stitch the back side of it and grabbing just the two of that doubled band we're going to pull another band through and place it back on your hook then we are going to pull that through the last one so we've slip stitched it we're going to go to the next one. So the next stitch on your four, going to the back side of it, grabbing just the two on the outside, and the next stitch on your five, grabbing the two on the back side of it, pulling a blue band through, replacing it back on your hook, and then pulling those two through the last two. And again, we're going to keep going onto the next stitch grabbing the two on the outside at the back to the next one as well the two putting a blue band through those replacing it and then slipping that through the bands that were already on your hook so this is what it will be looking like don't worry if it's really mess messy initially because we will flex them out a bit but we're going along the outside line grabbing the two bands on the inside just those two on both so it's easy if you press them against each other following on to the next and the four and then the next and the five pulling a band through replacing it on your hook and then feeding that one through 
I just lost one of my bands. So I'll try that again. Okay, just pulling those through and moving on to the next stitch. Just keep going exactly the same until you get to the corner. Pulling the band through and replacing it on the hook and slip stitching. slip stitch so now when you get to that last one on the four you will notice that you are at the corner of the five so what I want you to do is go through the back of the last pink one on the four grab those two and then just grab two from that corner of the five so we're not going through the whole middle part of it we're just going to grab two of what you would think would be the back two half like so putting another stitch through slip stitching it and then again we're going to go through that center but moving on to the next which is your blue we're going to go all the way through so the top and the bottom. We're going to grab both. There will be four. And then we're going to go through the whole center of that last band. Pull the blue through it. And through the blues. Replace it back on your hook. Slip stitch it through. Now I want you to go to the next pink on the three. Grab the back stitch but we're moving around the five. So I want you to grab just two off that same corner, just two pieces, grab another band, pull it through all the pink, replace it back on your hook, and then slip stitch. So basically what we've done is we've gone through that corner piece three times, we've extended not extended but increased <coughs> in a way so now we're going to move on to the next stitch in the three grab the two at the back and we're moving on to the next line in the five grab the two at the back pull a blue band through back on your hook and slipping it through so then on to the next stitch in the three going to the back, the next stitch in the five, going to the back. Now because we're on an end, so the five is on the end, once we get to the next stitch we're going to have to increase because we want it to be the same amount of stitches as we have. Uh, we have eight wide for the three but then we only have seven there so we're going to increase the next. So after you've done this so we've got one, two, we're on to the third row stitch. After you've done the third, pulled a band through, replaced it and then slip stitched it. This next one is the middle of the five. We're going to do it as normal. Through the back of each, pulling a band through, replacing it and slip stitching it. But now we're going to move on to the next row of the three, two back bands. We're going to say, go put another one on the same stitch in the five. So I've already got one in there, I'm going to put another one in there. So that's an increase. We're adding an extra stitch to where there really isn't an extra stitch there. So now we'll keep going as normal till we get to that next corner. Straight through the back of the next on each side, straight through the back of the next, 
pull the blue band through, replace, and then slip stitch it into the back, into the back, pulling a band through, replace, and slip stitch it. Now we've gotten to the corner, the opposite corner of the five. So we're going to do the same thing as we did on that side. We're going to go with the next stitch in the three, which is the pink one. Grab the two at the back. Then we're going to go to the two at the back of that corner. Pull the blue band through. Replace it. And pull it through. Slip stitch. Now we're going to grab both we're up to that blue band. I'm going to grab both of the outside like we did last time. So going through the two in the blue and then finding the center of that middle stitch where the pink is coming out. Going straight up through all there. Pulling another blue band through and through the blue as well, replacing it on your hook, slip stitching it, moving on to the next stitch in the so the first stitch of the one, going back in where we went into last time, that last stitch or first stitch of the five, but just grabbing two. Putting a blue band through the pinks, replacing it back on your hook, and then slip stitching it through the one on your hook. Now we can move on the next stitch in the one, the next stitch in the five, the two at the back, pulling a blue band through, slip stitching it through the one on your hook. So you can see what we've done is we've gone through that corner one again three separate times to move around and you can see that side is starting to make a corner. We're moving on to the next stitch in the one and the next stitch in the five. So you can fold it and bend it and push it against itself, make it a bit easier for you to actually grab those stitches you will find a way that is more comfortable and easy for you. And we're just going to keep working around the whole thing doing exactly what I've just showed you. So going through the back and grabbing the two outside of each stitch. Pulling a band through and slip not, uh, slipping it, slip stitching it we'll say. Every time you get to a corner, you want to do the two and then through the middle and then the two again while you're moving to each stitch on the opposite side. Every time you get to the center of an end square, you want to increase. So you want to add a second stitch into that center one to even it up. So I'll keep going with you. Just working along. You don't have to rush this. It will happen. And you will find that when you're bringing your bands through, if you give them a good pull so that they're at least, you know, they're halfway before you slip stitch, you won't find that they're um, misshaping so much. It'll be easier at the end. To fix it up so I'm on my corner again I'm sorry I'm almost at my corner bring the band through the pinks replacing it on my hook slip stitching I'm gonna grab just two from that corner And 
and I'm going to grab the last one of the five. So you can see we've made our way around the five. Pulling a band through, replacing it, slip stitching it, and then going through the middle of that corner one. Going through both of the end of that blue, pulling a band through, replacing it, and slip stitching it. Going to grab the next two on that same corner stitch and going on to the first stitch in the six. Pulling a band, oops, just lost it, but that's okay because if you do just pinch it tight, the bands won't move, it's pretty forgiving. And just try and grab, there we go, the band that we lost. So, going in the back two of that last corner and onto the first one of the six, pulling a band through, replacing it and slip stitching it. That's it. Sorry if I'm moving out of shot, guys. And moving on to the next one. On the one, the next one, on the six. Pulling a band through, slip stitching it. The next one on the one. The next one on the six, pulling the band through, replacing it, slip stitching it. So we're in the middle of the one, it is an end square so we want to put two in here. I half lost a stitch when I was closing this side up so that's why this side looks ganky for me on my one. So just following on with the next one on the six, in that middle one there, pulling it through all the pink, replacing it, slip stitching it. And then again, I'm going to go through the same space on the one, the next space on the six. So we've added a stitch. just on the side of the one and move on to our next next stitch on the one I mucked up a little bit there but that's okay next stitch on the six I slightly missed a stitch in there I went to the one a little bit further back but you won't notice it too much and moving on into the next stitch of the one, nearly at the corner, the next stitch in the six, pulling a band through, replacing it on your hook and slip stitching. Now we are at the corner of the one, which is also where we ended, we'll say our bracelet, our um, half of our cube. I want to keep these bands tucked in. I want to do the same thing I've been doing on the corners. So find the two back bands. Go and finish your bottle please. And then move into the next. Pull a band through. I'm trying to hold those gangly bands out of the way. Slip stitch it, 
Then hold those bands in, tuck them under and go through the whole thing, if that makes sense. And then go through all those blues on the outside as well. So I'm going to hold those bands down with my thumb so they're out of the way. And I'm going to squeeze it together and pull a blue through all of that. Replace it, slip stitch it, and move around these bands here that I have half tucked in. Move around, grab the two on the opposite side, so still in the same loop. Put the two bands underneath that are attached to that, holding that knot in. Moving on to the next. Hang on a second. Open the door for you. Go on. Go on, finish your bottle, please. Thank you. Sorry, guys. So we've moved in, holding that knot in there. So the bands are poking through underneath. Like so. And we're pulling a blue band through. And we've made it around that corner. Placing the band and slip stitching it. Keeping those bands tucked in. And just moving on to the next stitch in the one. Grabbing the two at the back and on the opposing side with the two there. So I'm going to keep going with this. I want you to keep going as well. Just doing what I've showed you. Slip stitching through each of those stitches. When you get to the corner, you're going to do the two at the back with that stitch straight through the middle of it with the two of the blue there, then the two on the other side with the next stitch. Follow it around. When you get to the center of the two, you're going to do two stitches through that center. Okay, so once you get to there, tuck it in and do what we just did. I have just slip stitched half of this with you. So hopefully you can keep going by yourself. Rewind if you need to and watch it again. I'm just doing exactly the same thing all the way around. And once I get to the halfway through the four, I will come back to you. I've got a little gremlin here on the floor shaking the table. I really need to sort him out. So keep going with how you're going. You can stop midway and give these bands a little bit of a stretch try and just gently shape them out so that they're more comfortable in themselves. You can, you know, stretch it around so that it's finding its shape a bit better. But don't go overboard. And um, I'll see you when you get to about here on the four. So keep going around and I'll see you in a moment. Okay, so I've gotten up to this middle bit right at the end of my four. This is where you would decide if you are going to stuff your dice but personally I'm not going to bother because I like it being squishy and it does find its shape again after you've squashed it. Um, but like I said totally up to you. Up to the middle line in the four. So I'm going to keep going and I'm going to add two stitches to that middle line of the four. So carrying on with the next stitch, the opposite side. I hope that you have made it this far. Going through that same stitch in the four again, but then going to the next stitch over in the six. Slip stitching it through. Okay, so also, now that we've put two through that one all we have to do is the last few to close it up and we'll finish there if you do have any of your little dangly bits hanging from where you closed up grab your hook a hook or even your finger you can probably even turn it inside out at the moment but if you really need to 
I would have done that before. But you can grab, put your hook in, grab the dangly bit and pull it tight and it will actually pull all the way inside so you won't even know it's there. So in on the other side of there is where I ended and you can't even tell because they're hidden inside. So we'll do our last couple of stitches going in through the back, feeding a band through, pushing the two sides together really tight. It makes it a lot easier to get to those back of those stitches like so. Second last one and I'm up to my last stitch which is the corner of the four. So I'm going through the two at the back of that corner and I'm taking the last stitch there on the six feeding a band through, slip stitching it. Now what I want to do, because we have completely gone around, I want to grab probably the band that we started with there, go through the middle of the next one also. So I've got two bands, I'll show you again. On that corner there, I'm going to go through and through. I'm going to grab a band. Maybe I will, yeah, I was going to say maybe I'll grab two bands, but no, I'll just grab the one band and I will slip stitch it, slip knot it through everything that was on my hook. So you can see that there is where I've finished. If you like, you can go through the bands, close up any little hole there that you don't really like, grab another band and do a slip knot because that is where I'm either going to hang it off a key ring or you can pull them in with your hook, go through one side, grab them on your hook, pull them, pull them inside so that they disappear in there. And of course being gentle so that you don't break any of your bands because the last thing you want to do is break a band now. But you get the gist. I actually want to keep these hanging out, so I'm not going to keep trying to push it in. But now, give it a flex, pull it around. You can grab at the corners a bit more. But there it is. There's our cube. Or close to, there's our dice. And what I like to do is just gently, on these edges, hook under there and turn it. My son is being very noisy in the other room. Put your hook under there and turn it just gently so we're making a majority of the band's tension loose on this side and that's what helps to make the corners look more prominent. Okay, so that's one side done. And you can see there how it looks like an edge. Do that to the next side. And there you have it. Your squishy cube. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. I hope you could keep up and please, if you do make some cubes, blocks, um, dice, whatever you want to call them, um, do post a picture on Instagram, hashtag it Vicstar, V-I-X-X-S-T-A-R-R, -R, 
as my channel is spelt. And yeah, I'd love to have a look. I don't want to miss any of your beautiful creations. And um, please like, subscribe and comment if you feel like it. Um, yeah, I hope you enjoyed and I will see you all very soon. Bye. And please remember, you do need to squish them and squash them around a little bit so that they become comfortable um, with the bands, you know what I mean? Like, they may look a little bit mucked up and scrunched up, but once you start squidging them around, they will start looking a lot nicer. So don't be worried. If your cube doesn't look so much like a cube, just fiddle with it and play with it, and it will come into its shape. Alright, good luck.